This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Joining us today is George Roach, the CEO of Premier African Minerals, following news from the company that operations have resumed at Zulu, a very short RNS, probably one of the shortest I've seen with a simple quote from the company. Subsequent to our update of 21st of September 2023, I am pleased to confirm the plant at Zulu resumed operations with material fed through the newly installed and commissioned mill. Further updates will follow. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, and you. Nice to talk to you. Indeed, George. I mean, we could just leave it at that, couldn't we? But I think that would be a little bit unfair to the shareholders. And I did notice, of course, the follow-up RNS, the interims there, with a bit more information where you say that you believe this will be the last time that you potentially report interim results that do not include details of cash generative operations. Acknowledging, of course, the difficulties with not achieving nameplate throughput and, of course, the situation with CAMMAX, but the completion and the installation of the RHA mill and the restarting of operations, you are expecting to meet production targets for shipments in November 2023. So clearly you are very happy with the situation, are you, George? You are able to meet I, those commitments to CANMAX. I, I look up, but that's a, that's a future event, and I believe that we will. Um, the the uh, temporary fix of the RHA mill should get us to run about fifty percent of the uh, forecast throughput for the plant, and um, that at the moment on the on the very early indications. And I think let me emphasise that that it's it's only this week that um, and now in the last couple of days that there's actually material fed through the mill, and uh, the the mill is doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, that's I'm very very pleased about that, and mm -hmm. um, it it at the moment looks as though that projected fifty percent is going to be what we can feed into the flotation plant, um, and I, I think the biggest win out of this at the moment is a that it is a little earlier than was expected, which I'm very pleased about, um, and b that we can now really get into the optimization of the back end of this plant to the flotation side. Um, we've never really had enough material going into the float circuits to really get them optimized, sorted out, and, and produce a proper concentrate. So as we feed the material through, as we bring the back end, the flotation side of this, um, fully up to speed, get the flotation cells filled, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think that really, and this is said with, with uh, hindsight, uh, we we should be able to see a proper optimization now um, of this plant. Okay. Um, from that point of view, I'm 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 both relieved and delighted, you know, and all of all of the emotions. Uh, indeed, indeed. No, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's been building for a little while, George. So the RHA that was the rod mill from RHA that's been converted to a ball mill, isn't it? That, yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, that and you say that will allow you. To get to fifty percent, so um, that's effectively two thousand tons, is it? Well, that would be the projection on concentrate that we could produce in a monthly basis at fifty percent of the original four thousand ton. Um, mm. the, re the requirement is to get to a thousand tons, and uh, yes. I, I think that I think that that's the right way to go about this. And let's see as we optimize. Um, I, as I said to you just now, the, the most important thing is that we can now properly start to start optimize. going. Yeah, and you know, let's let's hope there are no big bugs or anything like that in the flotation circuit. Sure, now, okay. I don't expect, but we need to go through the process. Indeed, the tonnage of the ball mill will be capable of doing, I guess, more than well, the one thousand, as you said, capable of doing yeah. possibly two thousand. Well, in terms of, and I think this is all out there in the public domain already, that the design uh, for the for the float circuit was a dry tonnage of thirty seven and a half tons dry material an hour, and and the early indications coming out of what's going in 
uh, is saying that we're comfortably getting 18 tons an hour of dry solids into the float circuit. So it's a little short of the 50%, but that's very early days. Okay. So I'm, I'm okay. reasonably comfortable that's where it's going to be. Okay. Well, of course, a video was released alongside the RNS. I wonder if we can just, I'll just show it now, just uh, so we sure. can have a look at what's going on there. So I wonder if you can perhaps talk us through what it is we're seeing. Well, what you saw initially, what you saw initially was the uh, uh, primary screening of the material. Uh, okay. That is that uh, the underflow from that screen is what is going to go through the ball mill. Um, that's a return conveyor going back to where the EBS is still operating. That's the ball mill. Um, and the discharge from that ball mill is then going to the hydrosizer. And what you're seeing there is the discharge of the slurries coming out of the hydrosizer that have been mulled uh, and that are ready to go to the flotation circuit. Okay, okay. So you have uh, been sent this video. You're not actually on site at the moment, I understand. No. But um, you, I guess you were quite pleased to see that, that video footage. Oh, yes, I am indeed. I am <laughs> indeed. indeed. Yeah, yes. okay. Well, now that operations have restarted, I mean, how long do you think the stockpile will keep uh, running? As I think was mentioned previous, that pit operations need to restart again as well. Do you have enough stockpile for that 1,000 ton target? Oh, yeah, at the moment we have. Um, and, and pit operations will start in the first week of, of October. End of next week, pit operations start. There's plenty of material uh, that is mulled and that is waiting to be fed. Um, apart from the minus eight mole fraction, which has been stockpiled anyway. So there's, okay. there's probably more than a month's worth of material sitting on the ROM pad and around that we can feed. Okay, okay. And of course, the new mill, the supply of the new mill that would meet the full design through, but is expected, this is again from the RNS this morning, it's expected X works in Q4 of 2023. And that's expected that the installation and commission in early Q4 of 24, following a two-week installation shutdown, that's planned to coincide with the festive break. And that will then take the plant to its nameplate throughput of 4,000 tonnes. So that's all at the moment on track, as far as you're concerned. Yes, the milling and comminution side of this, um, I believe, is now on track. I don't think that's where there's going to be any more problems. Um, okay. The changes with the new ball mill that is uh, being built at the moment um, are fairly extensive. And I think actually streamline the milling side of this plant much, much better than the original design. Um, as I've said to you, uh, we just now are in a position where we can optimize and uh, we now just need to make sure that the back end, the float circuit functions properly, that we produce the correct grades of spodumene and so on. Excellent. Thank you very much for, for giving us that update. I wonder if I can ask you just a little bit on, I know some people were interested on the thickener module, how that's going, how it's installed and um, if it's working okay. Uh, it will only be fully installed and commissioned in Q1 of next year. Okay, um, alongside, to coincide with the mill. I beg your pardon? To coincide with the installation of the, of the mill. It, it may even be slightly after the, the, the new mill goes in. Uh, that'll be the final step. Um, okay. And that might require some shutdown, will it, at that time as well? But hopefully no. not too long. No, no. Oh, no. Okay. okay, you can go straight no, in. It's okay. a freestanding... Uh, freestanding unit it's, it's not going to require any extensive shutdown at all okay okay and i know we talked last time on the on a magnetic separator to remove the tantalum there any news on the mag sep there when that might be fitted uh the no the mag sep has not been upgraded um so that at the moment all that the magnetic separator will do is remove the iron fraction um yeah the, the uh, removal and recovery of tantalum, which is a definite resource and that has to be done, I've, I've put aside for the moment. There are going to be some other modifications, I believe, that will be needed for that. Um, so we're not recovering it, but I've never factored it into any of our internal cash flow projections or anything like that at all. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll wait and see. That's a that's a longer lead item, I presume, that on the on the tantalum recovery. I think we need to do a bit more work on that and just okay. tune that circuit a bit more. Okay, okay.
Well, we've got shareholders who are wondering how your visit to China went, George. You were in China, the people have picked up, and they're wondering what you were doing there. I wonder if you can shed any light on that. Well, I, I visited um, uh, Canmax's uh, operations. Mm-hmm. Um, there, I, I, I was, it was, it was, it was a, a complete eye opener um, in terms of a number of things. Uh, first of all, the, the time frame within which they have accomplished what they, they have accomplished is quite astounding. Um, they, they have two plants at the moment uh, running, um, producing, uh, converting spodumene into lithium hydroxide. And the nameplate on these plants is 110,000 tons of lithium hydroxide per annum. Um, I, I, I get the impression that there are probably are from that perspective, if not the biggest one of the biggest around. Um, and in addition to that, they, they run a, a big flotation, spodumene flotation plant. So one gets a very good idea of where a lot of the, the ore that's coming out of the various different African countries that has not been, and other countries, not only out of Africa, uh, South America, I believe as well, um, where this um, spodumene rich ore, run of mine ore, has been going. Um, and that's a pretty impressive operation in its own right. Uh, so I, I was, as I say, that impressed me. Uh, the mm-hmm. professionalism associated with the operations of these plants is astounding. The, the engineering, um, and this is a, a sort of a very off-the-surface view, um, appears very good and very competent. Um, the it it was it was uh, the, the the other thing is the absolute knockout is that these things were built in the one plant that I went through and walked through in detail was built in less than a year, built commissioned operating in less than a year. Okay. So the visit over, from an overriding uh, perspective confirmed to me uh, what I've believed all the way through that this association that we have with Canmax is about spodumene. It's about how much can we get, how quickly can we get, and what can we do from Canmax's perspective to bump up our, our access to this? What is it that you want us to do? How quickly can you accelerate this? Can you do that? Can you do whatever? Um, and that that was the overriding message in this. But that's no different to what I believed it, what it has been all the way through, what I believed underpins our relationship and so on. So from that point of view, it was really it was it was it was an eye opener. The the courtesy with which I was I was welcomed. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there was nothing. There was no door that was closed. I could mm-hmm. walk through into anything, anywhere. Um, the chairman of the company was present in just about all our meetings. So, you know, all, all around, um, I felt much happier after the visit. And, and I think that, I think they, they did as well. And we will work closely to see how we can try and extend this uh, relationship. Well, it's good to hear that went well, George. You've mentioned a few times that it's really about we need spodumene and we want to work mm-hmm. together to get that spodumene. And it's good to hear the relationship is doing very well. I mean, do you think Camax will be your sole customer? We've talked before about other interested parties. I mean, I don't want to uh, cause any trouble by bringing that up, but is that no. something that you might consider? No, I'm happy to discuss uh, to discuss that. Look, at the, at the moment, uh, we're committed to, to Camax. Mm. I think the relationship is, is, is restored and is good, and uh, we'll honor that commitment right now. Um, you know, we, we, we're involved in some other um, spodumene development in, in, in Zimbabwe as well. We're looking elsewhere, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I, I think that for the moment, um, I, I think that the, the relationship is reasonably sound. Um, what we produce at the moment will go to Canmax, uh, and it will go exclusively for this period of time. Uh, the discussion with others, um, which was open and many people know about this, was was when when we'd uh, when we'd kind of lost a few of our wheels for a while between us, um, and Prem had to go and do what I had to do to protect the company. So yes, there was there was there, there still remains very strong interest elsewhere. 
Um, okay. You know, in, in that context, uh, I, I have a view that uh, there's possibly going to be a little bit of an overcapacity to convert spodumene to hydroxide uh, in terms of, but that at the back end is likely to see that the demand for spodumene remains underpinned. And uh, possibly um, yeah, there's a bit of an imbalance, I think, coming. And I think that uh, there, there are many areas, many, many other countries that want to produce their own lithium hydroxide. But um, many, of, many of the situations in China have been smart enough to tie up uh, what spodumene production or what surplus spodumene production there really is happening right now. Mm. Well, I, it might just underpin the uh, spodumene pricing to a greater extent than I had personally forecast. Okay. Yes. It's a very interesting time with uh, what's going on in that market and uh, how the Chinese are positioning themselves for uh, for that uh, move. I wonder if I'd ask you just a couple of last questions, George. Again, people are aware, I think, that you are not in country, you are in London. I mean, are you able to tell us a little bit why you are in the city? Uh, it's just really just a general business uh, situation. I mean, I... I haven't seen um, our regulators here for a while. Okay. I wanted to make sure that our um, interims were got and done and out in time. Uh, various, just various general business situations. This trip has been planned for probably three months now. Okay. Um, okay. And I haven't okay. spent any time here. There are many people I haven't seen for a while. So, you know, okay. that really is kind of where it is. Okay. And just a final thought, George. So we've really, you've got to the point where you can announce that you are on track to produce that 1,000 committed tons to Canmax by November. And things are looking at the moment on track for the full nameplate commissioning during Q1 next year. And really the focus now is going to move on to the optimizing of the float section now that you've got a steady production going through. And of course, that is when at some point you'll be able to announce the end product that you've got, the grade yes. of that, and if it meets SC6. So hopefully we haven't got too much longer to wait. I recall when I was on site, there was a visit by a, a government official. Do you think they will be turning up at some point to uh, officially do an opening ceremony or something like that at the, the appropriate time? I'll be disappointed if they don't, uh, and the invitation will certainly be there. Okay. Well, thank you very much, George Roach, for your time today, giving us all of that update. I look forward to catching up, maybe get some more detail on how the optimization of the float is going. But for now, thank you very much for your time, George Roach, CEO of Premier African Minerals. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.